Hi, my name is Todd Miner. I'm a licensed physical therapist and certified canine rehabilitation practitioner. And this is ARFID Dog Therapy and Rehab. Today we're going to talk about the shoulder and the neck, how to do some massage and stretching. So welcome. Let's get to it. All right, so today we're going to talk about massage to the neck and the shoulders, and we're also going to introduce some joint mobilization techniques that are very gentle and safe at home, and also some stretching for the shoulder and the neck. Uh, we're going to start with heat like we did last time, and we're going to talk about some anatomy uh, working on the neck and the shoulders. So after you do some heat, you're going to do it for about 15 minutes. Put it on high if you have an electronic heating pad right on the neck. If it's not too hot for you, it's not too hot for them. And this is a great cue before we start doing massage. And again, like I said in the first episode, the heat helps relax the tissues. It's a vasodilator, so it helps improve blood flow to the area. And it's a really good way to allow you to improve the effectiveness of your massage. All right, so we want to talk about some anatomy. We're going to be looking at the cervical spine, which starts at the base of the skull. It goes down to the scapula, which is about the shoulder region. There are seven cervical vertebrae. And then we're gonna talk about the thoracic spine, which goes all the way down to T12. So there's 12 thoracic vertebrae. And as we talked about before, the low back is between the end of the thoracic spine and the hips. So now we're dealing with this whole region here. So this is a larger part of the dog. And we're gonna use our initial technique like we did in the first episode. You're gonna start right at the base of the skull and work on each side of the spine, doing small circles, starting very lightly and working your way all the way down the spine. And as we talked about in the first episode, the technique is very gentle to your dog's tolerance. And you can work all the way up and all the way down. As they get more relaxed, you can start to go deeper. And what we're working on are the thoracic and cervical paraspinal muscles. There are tiny little muscles right along each side of the spine that aid in rotation of your dog and allowing them to lift their head and stand upright. So that's gonna be your first technique. Once you get one side, you can then switch over and do the other side. Now this whole thing can take you probably five or 10 minutes going up and down. If your dog likes this massage, this is all you have to do in one of the treatments. So this is again, kind of taking off from the first part with the low back, working on just doing small circles to the area, all the way up onto both sides. Very good. Early is a very good patient. I just tired him out on the treadmill, so he's nice and relaxed. He loves the attention on the table. All right, so that's the first technique that we're talking about, the small circles again. And now we're gonna introduce a new technique and we're gonna talk about the shoulder blades, the scapula, which is basically shaped like a triangle. It has one edge right along the shoulders that's parallel to the the shoulder, the humerus. So here's part of the scapula. The second angle goes down towards the back and you can feel right behind the humerus, the arm bone, another bone and that's the scapula. The whole scapula is this area. So here's the top, here's the inferior angle. So it comes down like a triangle and runs parallel to the spine. So you have one line, second line, third line. This big huge bone is the anchor for the shoulder, for the rotator cuff, and this provides stability when a dog puts weight on their front legs. What tends to happen, especially with older dogs as their weight shifts forward, is that their shoulder blades get very tight. Their neck gets tight, just like with a human being where your trapezius gets tight up through here. So this area could be an area of discomfort for the dogs. So we're gonna talk about a way to stretch these muscles using two different techniques. One is going to be a stretching technique. The other is going to be a stretching mobilization of the scapula. The easiest way to move the scapula 
is again using the heel of your hand like we did with spinal mobilization. We're gonna put it along what's called the spine of the scapula, the top angle, and you're gonna gently put your heel, you can brace your dog, and you're gonna just apply gentle pressure. So this motion, if you can see, and I'm putting probably one or two pounds on Earl, he's a big dog. Again, like we talked about in the first episode, gentle rocking of your dog is what you're looking for. It should be very comfortable. This motion is actually shifting the scapula down. And so we're stretching the trapezius and all the soft tissue around the shoulder blade. This is gonna help with shoulder mobility, which we're gonna get into, and the ability to turn the head, neck mobility. So you can do maybe 20 to 50 oscillations, nice and easy, rocking back and forth. And this will be very relaxing to you. All right, and next we're gonna talk about doing a stretch. So we can anchor, I'm putting my thumb at the top of the shoulder blade, and then we're gonna stretch the cervical spine and the trapezius. Again, as long as your dog is relaxed, it's a gentle motion, you put your hand behind the ear, and we gently turn the head just like this. So the stretching is happening along here. Now as your dog enjoys it, they may stretch more. If they resist, it's uncomfortable, then you wanna back off. This is a very gentle technique. We're just trying to reduce tension in the neck. It's an area that gets a lot of stress and strain for dogs because their head is being lifted. It's kind of like obviously us bending forward all the time. Think about how heavy these how hard these muscles have to work to lift the head up, especially when you got a monster cranium like early. All right, and you can hold this for probably about, I would say about two minutes. Count to 120 very slowly. The two minute rule is actually a rule for soft tissue for humans, for canines, for felines. Holding and sustaining a stretch for two minutes is when you actually create changes in soft tissue. The time is very important. So holding less for that, and you're not gonna have as good a benefit from the treatment. Obviously, if your dog doesn't tolerate a long stretch, then you lighten up and you gradually work your way into the weight. Okay? And then once we've done that side, we can go ahead and now come to the other side and do our mobilization of the scapula. So we can take the other hand and push and brace. His head position isn't that important. I'm just trying to move his shoulder. So you see Earl is getting into it. And so I'm pushing this way. So the heel of my hand is on the shoulder blade. Again, on this side, if you want to feel landmarks, here's the top of the scapula. As you trace down, the inferior angle is deep in here. It's tricky with Earl because he's, there it is. It's right here. So I'm moving the shoulder blade back and forth. There we go. And you see his whole body's rocking with it. It's very comfortable. So the technique, again, can be either hand. We'll do it for this for the sake of the camera, and we're just gonna be pushing down parallel to his spine. And again, this is loosening the shoulder, too. And you can see the humerus is moving a little bit as well. And then, once we've done that, say, 30 to 50 times, we can then stretch the neck. So we're gonna change position here. And I'm gonna anchor the scapula. Yes, sir. And then we're gonna turn. Bring the head gently. Just like that. Little stretch. What do you think? And stretch. And then again, this is a nice hold if your dog will tolerate. So it's very curious about the camera, so he's just being very gentle. And then we hold. Okay? Okay, good. So we're going to talk about another very important muscle along, are you going to fall off? No. We're going to talk about another important muscle that gets involved a lot in dogs, and that's the latissimus. The latissimus, if you look at me, is that big muscle that runs down the V in like a bodybuilder's back. Dogs have latissimus muscles as well, and it runs parallel or right on top of the scapula. So the latissimus will run from the top of the humerus, down the shoulder blade, all the way to the, to the uh, 12th rib. And this muscle is very important because when dogs slip or they strain themselves, for example, if his leg was to go forward rapidly, kind of a skidding motion or out, maybe on tile or hardwood floors when they're playing, 
this muscle can get strained quite a bit and it's, a, it's an injury that we treat here quite a bit. What you'll notice is the dog will be light on that leg. It'll hurt to put bare weight and their head will go up when they weight bear and that can be a latissimus strain. So the way to palpate the latissimus is going to be the inferior angle of the shoulder blade again. So here's the scapula feeling the bone. And then right here, here's the thoracic spine. You're gonna feel the muscle. And the muscle feels like maybe a couple of fingers of tissue in here. It pops up a little bit right off the angle. And so once you find that muscle, you can then do circles to it. Or I'm gonna show you another technique and this is called strumming or friction and we can go perpendicular to the direction of the muscle. So we're gonna do this to loosen it up. And so we work right here. That's it. Perfect. And this you can do, you would count about 50 times. And again, you start very gently. And then if they like it and they tolerate it, you can go deep. So basically what you're doing is you're, you're moving the tissue to loosen up any adhesions that may have formed because of the muscle strain. When a muscle gets injured or strained, the body braces and tends to freeze that area. That's why we, we become stiff and immobile. And this technique helps break that tissue again to loosen it up to allow it to move more naturally, okay? So the strumming or friction technique is a very good technique. You can do it to both sides. You come over here, again, following the shoulder blade to the inferior angle of the bone, and it's right here, and so we work. Now, if this is an area of discomfort for your dog, you're gonna see their reaction. It'll be positive if you go very lightly, and you're gonna help loosen it up. There we go. Good. So what we've done with these techniques so far is we've loosened up the shoulder blade by physically moving the scapula, the shoulder blade, by stretching muscles that attach to it, the upper trapezius and the cervical paraspinals, and by doing friction on the latissimus. So these techniques have helped free up this shoulder blade to allow them to move more comfortably in their upper body. Now another very good technique is stretching of the shoulder itself. When a dog is laying down and they're comfortable, it's very easy to stretch them. You can actually go right behind the elbow. So you'll see this bend here in the, in the front limb is the elbow. So here's the shoulder, here's the elbow. And an easy way to do this stretch is to grab below the elbow and take the other hand behind the elbow and gently pull forward should be very comfortable. And we're looking at stretching now the latissimus muscle, the one that may have been strained. And this is a really good way to get a nice relaxation response and work on scapular mobility. Good job, Hurley. Very good. And again, this is a two minute rule too. If you can do it for two minutes, it's great, it's ideal. And again, this is just a gentle stretch. We're not forcing end range. We're going to what's comfortable. We want to try to get the shoulder to be parallel to the ground, if we can do that. If there's a restriction here, don't try to stretch it. You need to continue to work and do some gentle massage to see if it'll loosen up some more. All right, and now we can do the other side. It's the same thing. So we're gonna grab the humerus, the wrist, and then right behind the elbow, here's the elbow again supporting and gently pull forward just like that and hold a very good comfortable stretch what do you think pearly i feel good and that would be a two minute hold as well okay good so now we've gotten this whole area loosened up so something else i'd like to talk about is that you notice that i worked here before I work distally, we're gonna to get to the end now, and there's a reason for that. If there's dysfunction in this area, blood flow can be restricted, and if you do massage here before loosening tissue up here, you're gonna get congestion and you're not gonna be as effective. So now that I've loosened these larger muscles, 
we can go now into the distal area and we can start doing some gentle range of motion of the wrist. These are the tarsals or carpals and metacarpals, I guess if we're dealing with humerus. So here's the wrist here. And we can work on gentle extension and flexion as long as it's comfortable. All right, curly, you getting comfy? Is that better? Good. So again, just gentle range of motion, nothing too excessive. The dog bears weight on this, so you should be able to put your palm of your hand right on their pads and gently stretch, okay? This is a real nice position, should be very comfortable. Good. You may notice he's got little caps on his toes. These are called toe treads, and these help dogs from slipping. These are amazing. They're glued on, two nails on each foot and we use them on all of our clients. It keeps them from slipping on hardwood floors and tile. So it really makes a difference in their quality of life. All right, and now doing massage, we can do some gentle stroking along the dorsal aspect of the arm, the radius and the ulna. And so, when I do massage, I always, especially with the extremities, we always push towards the heart. Because we're pushing lymphatic, if there is swelling, we're pushing lymphatic fluid towards the heart. This helps with much. So working in this direction, you can do this 10, 30, 50 times if you like. And you'll see that as I'm working, I'm going past the elbow into the tricep into the rotator cuff. There's a good spot, this is meaty here. So you got teres major and minor, you got infraspinatus and supraspinatus, and all these muscles are part of shoulder stability. And they can get weak. So the massage, they also get tight because they're putting so much weight on their front legs. And so this gentle stroking motion, effleurage, sweetest massage, whatever you want to call it towards the heart. Good. And then we can do the same to the other side. Keep them in a comfortable position. We, also, we always talked about not manipulating your dog so much, letting them be relaxed and comfortable. So we can again do some gentle stretching. Forward and backward. Working the wrist, just gentle pressure. And then working up along the radius towards the heart. Up the humerus, here's the tricep, big muscle, into the rotator cuff. Okay, so again, we can stroke maybe 30 to 50 times in a soft, gentle motion. Good. All right, there's one more area we're gonna talk about today for the shoulder. We're gonna to get to the pec muscle. So the pec muscle is in the front. So where the humerus meets the trunk below the neck, this is the chest, this is the pec. This muscle runs like this, like a finger across, and you're gonna feel it, it's pretty meaty. It can be very tight. So again, small circles, working the muscle is a really good technique in here. So we can work just like this. And we're pulling, you'll feel this band of tissue. It's a big muscle. It's, you know, it's like bent, when you bench press, it's your chest, it's a plank muscle. But we can work circles like this. You can alternate. This will give you a good view. This side too. Okay. And we can do the same over here. Give us a better view of my fingers. Working in back muscles. Yeah, good. All 
All right, good. So we kind of covered the entire neck and shoulder area that we would do in the clinic too. Hopefully I gave you guys some insight on what is beneficial for your pooch when doing massage. Um, so we have several different techniques that we went over today. We went over the small circles again along the paraspinal muscles all the way down. We then did some mobilization with the heel of the hand on the shoulder blade. We then held the shoulder blade down and gently stretched the neck. To create a stretch right here. We then worked into the latissimus muscle, the inferior angle of the scapula, and did some friction massage. And then we stretched the shoulder all the way up, mobilized the wrist, did massage all the way up the muscles to the rotator cuff, and then we worked on the pec. And we covered quite a bit today, but this is a very good kind of sequence in order to get your dog's upper body feeling the best that it can. All right, I think you did good early. What do you think? I think you're nice and relaxed. Okay, great. All right, so that's the end of episode two. We talked about massaging the upper body, the neck and the shoulders. I hope you got something out of uh, this tutorial today. Uh, next episode, we'll be talking about uh, mobilization, stretching, and massage of the hips and the, and the hindquarters. That'll be episode three. Uh, if you're ever in Chicago, please stop by our clinic. We're right in Lincoln Park. You can check out our website, which is probably down here. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel by hitting the button down there. And hopefully we'll see you soon. Thanks again. Take care.